God's work. <laughs> Everybody asks, what is his work? And the moment they ask, I was shocked. What is God's work? <laughs> then what were you watching all this time? Sir Joseph John Thompson, popularly known as J.J. Thompson, born on 18 December 1856 in Manchester in England, died on 30th August 1914 in Cambridge in the United Kingdom with his British physicist and Nobel laureate in physics, credited with the discovery of the electrons, the first subatomic particle to be discovered. Sir J.J. Thompson said, as we conquer peak after peak, we see in front of us regions full of interest and beauty. But we do not see our goal. We do not see the horizon. In the distance tower still higher peaks, which will yield to those who ascend them still wider prospects and deepen the feeling, the truth of which is emphasized by every advance in science that great are the works of the Lord. A scientist melting with nature is impossible. A scientist suddenly became a nobody and became the nature or melted the nature. When you melt with nature, you and nature together becomes one and then a poetry follows, a truthful poetry follows. Such was J.J. Thompson's quote. As we conquer peak after peak, we see in front of our regions full of interest and beauty, but we do not see our goal. That means we don't look into ourselves because the nature is so vast. As you go deeper and deeper, but if you're conscious. I was traveling with my Japanese fiancé, not now, some 40 years back, story 40, 40, 45 years back. From, we, we started from China, from Shenyang to Beijing, Beijing to uh, Canton, Canton to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Kathmandu, and that is where the fun started. Whenever I tell Onocha, can we take a rick or a car? She said, Rocky sir. <laughs> we are on a tour to see places. So we should when walking, you will see so many beautiful places. But, but leg will be paining, but pain is gain, <laughs> she said. Oh, yes, yes, we have come to see the place, <laughs> yes, to explore the place for a second. Yes, a small girl, she was much younger to me. As we conquer peak after peak, we see in front of us regions full of interest and beauty, but we do not see our goal, we do not see the horizon. Because why, you know, we became blind, we became unconscious of our greed. We are trying to look at others, if others are doing, and we keep on telling others, don't borrow, we don't borrow. We don't be copycat. We are literate, we are educated, but exactly that's what you want. If another lady wants a sari, I want a sari. Another one was another, another one thing, you want exactly that thing. You are getting hypnotized by anything you see materialistic. When you get crowded with materialistic things, which the television gives you enough, other times satellite becomes a truth. Radio gives you enough. And the gibberish talks of your students, you are thinking if I do not move with the gibberish talks, I'll be disconnected from that fool's paradise. And then you are lost. When you are lost, you can never see the beauty. And you go on searching and searching and searching. 
Rabindranath Tagore has written a nice couplet. He said, I was in search of God. And I wanted to meet God. And every day I was praying to God. One day while I was walking in Calcutta city, I saw a piece of paper in front of me. This is very popular in Calcutta. You can see small, small piece of paper. People may purposely may drop money or something to find out whether you will pick it up. So majority of people might not pick it up. It will be lying down like the Japanese. You throw money, purse also, it won't be there. The police station in Japan, what they do is they keep a camera and they keep the purse there. One week also, 100,000 people walk, nobody has touched it. Yes. So if you lose anything, if you're a little conscious, you can come back to the exact point and you can get the thing back in Japan. So in Calcutta, Rabindranath Tagore saw a piece of paper. He looked around, he slowly bent and he picked up the paper. He went to the corner of the place, he opened the paper, he was shocked. It was the address of the God. He was thinking, oh my God, throughout my life I was searching for you. And now I'm the only luckiest person. All these were monkeys walking around to me. Look, I have the address of God. And slowly folded it up. And he started walking towards that place of the God. It was in Park Street in the second uh, race school, something like that. And he reached exactly to the, to the Park Street. And it's written on the first floor, God resides on the first floor of that building. He opened the paper once again, yes, and he looked at the gate. In the gate itself was written, God resides here. He slowly climbed up to the, to the first floor, and in the door he saw the name, God resides here. Rivendranath Tagore said, I was so happy, my God, I am in the door of the God, all these are monkeys. They never got a chance. I was got a chance. Maybe I was the chosen few of God. So he took, pulled up his hands, he was about to knock, and then he thought, suppose God himself opens. He folded the paper back. Again, he thought of knocking. He said, suppose God secretly opens and says, what do you want? What will I say? He folded it back. And he turned around and turned around and he started running very fast. And he said, even now I'm keeping the paper in my hand and running around. <laughs> Where is God? People have become so many, they're looking for, for beauty, beauty in you. Your eyes, your nose, your ears, your whole body, if you not to love, if you not to explore. There is no such beauty. Once you know this one beauty, this beauty connects you to the consciousness of anything and everything. And you never ever could feel like the India. Majority of the Indians I know, they see anything as God. I was an atheist and I couldn't believe there is God. But one, once I started Rakham School for the Blind and I saw my children's love, for a second, all that busted, that nut was busted. And for a second, I became a nobody. Anything, everything I see is God. Yes. And you feel happy. And for every question, you have an answer. Oh, you don't need an answer. You are. You are that. Try that word. As we conquer peak after peak, we see in front of us regions full of interest and beauty. But we do not see our goal. We do not see the horizon. In the distance towers still higher peaks, which will yield to those who ascend them still wider prospects and deepen the feeling, the truth of which is emphasized in every advance in science that greater the works of God.